be healthy. Shifting gears, not a tough time to be a Leafs fan, but a tough time to be a Leaf if your name is Jimmy VC. He found out that the team was, well, better off without him. Waved by the Maple Leafs. Not a good scenario for the young man that graduated from Harvard and won the hockey Heisman Trophy, the Hobie Baker. His frustration will be dealt with individually. As a team, where does this leave the Leafs? Here's Kyle Dubas, their GM. It's a rare time where probably a, a rental is, is a better fit. That said, if it's something that can, we feel can improve our team long term, we'll, we'll find a way to, to make it work and, and figure it out, whether it's a pure hockey trade or having to do something else to offset it. In the summer, we had to move out some forwards that were good forwards for us in order to add on the back end, and, and thus um, we feel like that's an area where we may want to look at a little bit more, but I, I'm not precluding uh, anything at this point, but I'd say most of the conversations are, are focused on, on uh, forwards right now. But we would, we would explore everything we possibly could if it meant improving the team. I am joined by a couple of former Maple Leafs. Let's start with you, Mike Johnson. Where do they go from here? There are a plethora of options. Yeah, so some interesting notes from that Dubas press conference. One is that he traditionally has looked for guys with term or guys that he could extend. Jake Muzzin, Jack Campbell, players of that ilk when making a trade. Alex Kerfoot. But they don't have the cap space, so they're looking at a rental. That is noteworthy. Also, Jimmy Vizion on waiver. He hasn't really fit in that great despite the five goals he has. He hasn't really solidified his line. And so they're looking to change maybe a top six winger spot or possibly a third line center. Look at the names that are here. Pretty good players. Taylor Hall, Palmieri, Granlin, Hall of Stahl are options down the middle depending which way they want to go. They have Joe Thornton up front and Zach Hyman's had an amazing year, but they love him so much on the third line. There might be one more spot in the top six, a spot that was originally filled by Jimmy Vesey. So, um, you know, they like to slide Hyman down if they can. And if they can acquire a top six reader, um, and I think any of those guys would, would do well. They don't need a superstar. They probably don't need Taylor Hall. That's maybe being greedy. But they need a, a grinder, a defensively responsible player, and a guy with some skill who doesn't make too much money who can play in their top six reader. I think that's kind of what they're after. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Johnny. And you look at the waiver. Just because you're put on waivers doesn't mean that you are automatically off the team. Now, it's not fun being put on waivers. The Leafs put Jason Spets on waivers earlier in the year. He's already had a hat trick with the team. He still averages over 10 minutes a game, and he's one of their best right shot, big time uh, faceoff guys. So, uh, Jimmy Vesey's on waivers with Simmons coming back, uh, and and even with Campbell back. There are going to be issues. Guys are going to have to be moved around in and out. And the only way to get around the cap space is to put a player on waivers to move him off your roster for a few days uh, in the American Hockey League roster. Mm -hmm. Put him on the, uh, not necessarily even on the HL roster, but put him on the taxi squad. So I think that's the situation with Jimmy Vesey. I don't think the Leafs have given up on Jimmy Vesey. Uh, I just think that this is a situation that a few players are going to have to go through. May not like it. And Jimmy VC still may get picked up. And, Johnny, getting back to your point, I say that the Leafs are in need of another Zach Hyman except to look for a finished player to come in. If, if there was uh, – and I look at guys like Esatikin and Yuri Letton, and who I play with in mm -hmm. Dallas, that's the style of player that the Leafs are, f are looking for. And the reason I say finished players, because Michael Granlin's a guy who was there, Eric uh, Hall is a guy who was there. Like, you've got players – of that ilk who are grinders. And I always say Zach Hyman reminds me of a Finnish guy. He could a Hyman and could be Zach's <laughs> name because he is such a good player on this team. Every line he goes to all of a sudden seems to be the most effective line on the team. They don't always score, but the work ethic that he has uh, just elevates him to be able to play anywhere. And that's the style of player the Leafs are looking for. They're not looking for another um, uh, a, a Joe Thornton, I would say, goal scorer. I think they need the meat and potatoes to get – uh, Wayne Simmons mm -hmm. back. They'll get him back soon. They can find another player uh, up front like that. I think that's the player that they are, are going to be able to squeeze in. Although they are tight to the cap, uh, Kyle Dubas did say that if it's there, they will figure the cap situation out and they will make it happen. Johnny, what do you think also, about what he just also said? Of note, yeah, also of note, Tone, uh, when it comes to the timing for Kyle Dubas and what he might want to do, He's aware that there is the 14-day quarantine requirement coming into Canada, and he wants to get that over with as soon as possible so that player they acquire can play as many games as possible. And that factors into VZ going on waivers. Because if he clears waivers, 
then that allows Toronto the flexibility to send him up and down from the taxi squad for, I think, seven or eight games. So if it happens in the next seven or eight games, you have easy access to get a guy off the roster right away without having to wait on anything. So just to get a sense of the timing that it may be sooner rather than later for Toronto. Hey, Timing John, is everything in life. Johnny, I, I, got, I got a quick question for you. The, the rumors come out. I mean, you're, we're both Toronto guys. We're both in the area. You're in Toronto. I'm in the area. Uh, uh, Nick Foligno's name has come out as a possibility to Toronto. Have you, mm -hmm. have you heard about that one? I mean, there's a, that'd be a little hefty on the, uh, the pay scale to fit in there. But he would, be, yeah. he would be the style of player that Toronto's looking for. I don't know if Columbus is willing to, uh, to let him go without a fight, though. Yeah, I mean... I think that the dollars would be tough there. I mean, they'd have to probably trade Alex Kerfoot to get, you know, get rid of Kerfoot's contract. He makes three and a half. I think, I think Nick makes about five. Um, and I don't think his contract's expiring. So that will be harder to do. They love that kind of player. And who wouldn't want Felino on your team? Like, either one of them. Give me either one of the Felino brothers on my squad. Yes, it's been floated in the media, but I just don't know if it's as easy a deal to make despite uh, an obvious fit on the ice. That would be intriguing. Interesting. That's that. There's some, that's some meat on the...